Hey everyone, I've been uh, asked by a few of you to talk a little bit about my setup. So I'm gonna kind of break this down into a couple different uh, maybe videos. This is totally new, new to me, so uh, bear with me. I'm not really gonna do any editing. I'm just gonna go like a first you know, pass and see how it goes. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna talk about my, uh, my controller. So this is a 5,500 watt uh, still. It's a, it's a keg that I flipped upside down. Uh, I'll do another video on that, just kind of why I made certain decisions about certain things, what I might change or what I would change if I did it over, maybe to help others that are thinking about it. But for my controller, uh, this has been kind of, it took me a couple of years to get to a point where I think, knew what I wanted and whatnot. But uh, the brains of this is up here in the upper right is an Auber Easy Boil Steel Controller. I don't know the exact model number, um, but you, if you go to Auber's website, uh, you'll find there, they have, there's two different models. Um, but this is kind of, you know, the brains. It, the nice thing is this thing runs both in a P, as a PID and a power controller. Oh, I just hit 200 degrees, which has an alarm. Um, so how, what it's, how, it's, how it's running right now is as a still controller, because I'm actually doing a run right now. And in still control, in still mode, it is a power regulator. So the P, the 16 that you see here is the actual percentage being uh, output to the heating element. Now this is, um, it uses a solid state relay, but it's, it's a, um, I don't know the, the exact type of solid state relay offhand, but they use some, you know, black magic to uh, smooth out the, the off and on of the power. Um, they use some physics in, you know, electricity to, you know, work with that. You can go to the website and figure all that out. It's not really my thing, um, but I understand the concept and it made sense to me when I read it. So uh, in uh, in PID mode, it's really kind of it's for more for like mashing. It's basically to hold certain temps. Now I know a lot of people. There's some controversy as to whether or not you know you sh you know you should or shouldn't use a PID. It's, it's obviously makes things a lot simpler when you do. Um, using PID to boil water is you know questionable. It kind of you know PID is really mo more to hold te hold temperature hold something at a certain temperature. Uh, it basically can be used to boil you know liquid. Uh, you know there's no reason why I can't. You put the target temperature above boiling point and it'll always just boil. But the nice thing is I can actually control the power output to a very fine degree. Um, so literally between, you know, I started this run at 15, 15% and towards the end I kicked it up to 16 because it went from a nice fine pencil strip, pencil, you know, uh, pencil thin stream to, you know, kind of a drip and I wanted to get it back to a stream. So I just kind of bumped it up 1% and a minute later it came, you know, it started coming out of the stream again. Uh, it's just, you know, that's just my thing. So uh, I love it. Uh, the other nice thing is I do use it in PID mode because um, I'll use my boiler to heat up my water when I for my recipes. So I'll hit a you know I'll set it at my target temp, um, and I know it'll maybe cool down a certain number of degrees when I put it in my um, when I go to when I go to mash um, and make my wort, or you know if I'm making a whiskey or, or whatnot. But um, it makes it super easy to do that. Um, on the left here is uh, two other temperature monitors. The top one is my head temp. So this is my boiler temp, and obviously uh, boiler temps are not the best thing to use to kind of run, uh, to gauge where you are in your, in your run. Um, but from the uh, brain's perspective, that's just how this thing runs. It needs to know where it is, uh, where the liquid is, and uh, from a PID standpoint, it needs to know where it needs to go. Uh, so that's just what it does. On the left is my head temp. So um, on my head is, is that probe. And then my boiler probe is down here. It's one of the, the ferrules on the side. And then below, in the lower left, is my, my chiller, my, my coolant temp. So I'm in Southern California. I don't have the benefit of, uh, you know, unlimited supply of water, or I do, but um, it costs a lot of money. So uh, I need to recirculate. Uh, in the old days when I used to run this one a lot more, this little, you know, lab still, um, I used to just use, you know, f frozen bottles of water, but in a larger still, you don't really, uh, that's a very not, not very practical. So I have a DIY chiller that I built. Uh, that's actually behind this wall here and it's plumbed in right there. So this temp right here is coming out of, um, this is my output and my input. So cold water is coming out here and it's returning warm back here. And so I'm, I'm monitoring uh, the temperature that's coming out of, coming out of the chiller. 
And that's just for, you know, safety reasons, making sure that um, my chiller is working right. Um, and I have some alarms set if it goes over a certain amount. Uh, with all this turned on, um, here I have a key that turns on the actual, it's a, it powers a contactor switch inside here that actually will then um, regulates the power output to the, uh, directly to the heating element. So I could have this entire unit on, like you see now, but this, sw this switched off and there'll be no power out to the heating element. Uh, that will allow me to kind of set things up and modify settings without actually sending power. Um, that's kind of, you know, if this thing is not full and you end up sending power, you can burn up your element. Um, that's an issue. So I just wanted a way to control that. I used a key just so that I could, you know, pull the key out and, you know, put it somewhere and, you know, keep people from uh, messing with it if they wanted to try. Down here, just the, the bottom row are just some switches. Uh, the one on the right's not being used right now. Well, really, there's uh, there's a power, uh, power outlet right here that this switch controls. That's if I wanted to kind of have an external pump, if I wanted to pump things, pump stuff out of the... The boiler to somewhere else, um, I, can, I can turn it off and on here. These two right here on the left, um, this center one, these basically two go to this one single unit. So of the three prongs, the center prong is for this one is uh, is uh, grounded and the, and the right ones are energized. So the, the right one on the right, or I should, the ones on the outside are energized. The one on the right is controlled by this one and the one on the left is controlled by this one. That basically allows me to send a sig two different signals to my chiller. This one's for the actual AC unit. So turning this on, turns on a contactor switch over by the AC unit, which then provides power to the, you know, turns the AC unit on. And then the one on the left is for the pump. So there's another contactor switch for the pump. Turning this on energizes the contactor switch, which then powers on the pump. So turn, you know, so I can control that from here and I don't need to go into the basement um, other than, you know, for inspecting, which is really more for safety. Um, so yeah, this is it. Uh, I'll talk about my my boiler in, in another video, but as you can see right here, it's, it's super fine. I love this thing. Um, the pair between the, the 5500 watt element and that saw the uh, the still controller, uh, the, the match is just just beautiful. I mean, right now I'm I'm running at about uh, 72 percent, and the thing just sits there. It's like it's just you know floating. There's no doesn't go up and down or anything. It just seems to be a really good match. Um, and I highly recommend, uh, re recommend it to anyone that's deciding to get into this and go this route. So yeah, take care.